Ayoto and welcome to today's episode where we're talking about art and Africa. And I'm also with somebody who is going to join us as this video goes on to put, to share in with his own that he has to share uh, since I'm here with it. So as you saw the beginning of the video, um, I was with Kwanda Nyazeka at the Vits Art Museum. Also check out his YouTube channel before I move on. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, he talks on agripreneurship. He talks about entrepreneurship and all things finance. Here I am today talking about arts and Africa on The Real Talk with KT. So he is the Vits Arts Museum. What is the Vitz Arts Museum? The Vitz Arts Museum is an arts museum that's part of um, the one of our biggest universities in South Africa, Africa as well, um, known to be the University of the Vitz Vatis Rant. Yes, the University of Vitz Vatis Rant. So that's where we went. Um, and it's a, it's a museum that only focuses on displaying African art. It's all about contemporary and also historical art. Uh, we were fortunate enough to actually be at an exhibition where most of the things there, um, as you can see, most of the things there, such as this part over here, has been used, has really been used uh, back in those days before I was born, during the time and the days of our ancestors. However, this is from Nigeria. Nigeria. So yeah. We met up with such things. We met up with artwork. We met up with so many things that make sense, you know, and that support our statement that says that Africa is a civilization and Europeanization is not civilization. Yes, because a lot of us believe that Europeanization is civilization when, as as Africans, have been civilized even before the arrival of Europeans. However, the only difference is, which is what we're going to talk about here in, on today's episode, is how distinct the, the, say, the things that we do and how distinct they are from, you know, our fellow European brothers and sisters. Um, because a lot of us have misinterpreted and we've thought, oh, so Africans have been subjected to think that the European way of living is a better and greater way to live than how we used to live before. A lot of people believe that we were savages and we lived with animals, but we have our own civilization that continued to develop us as well. It was just not in a European episode, um, especially since I'm shooting with where I'm shooting today. Um, we are here to talk, as we're at the Real Talk with KT, about arts and Africa and what it is to be African and who we are as Africans. Um, in this sit-down talk, we are going in depth and also reflecting on the things that we've learned um, at that Vitz Arts Museum that we visited that day. Also, stay tuned during the course of this episode of videos and shots of when we were there, including Gwanda Nezeka correcting me. I must highlight, correct. And a specific part um, that spoke about what well, I made, I, 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 I was saying what was written, uh, but only to find out I was saying the wrong things. So there are some of the things apparently that are there that need to be corrected. 
about to address the thing. Something that's like this, no, they, yeah. What is this? Yeah, there, there's his YouTube channel, Entrepreneurship, Financial Education, Running a Business, and Agremiership. I'm here to touch on a lot of things before we go on into the parts at the museum, such as our spirituality such as our education system and the way we did things as indigenous Africans. As you guys saw in episode one, um, I said that I am a Motswana, Kimotwana Wabarulong from my mother's side and Kimotaro from my father's side. So, but it's still, it's still Tswana, it's still Bajana, it's still, um, um, the languages are the languages the same, close to similar. The only difference is that Barolong, when they say father, when they say God, they say Rara, and then Bataru, when they say God, they say Hara. So it's only those different things that that are distinct. However, uh, collectively, Rote uh, The totem animal for Barolong, for this Capelos, which is my mother's family is an elephant and a kudu those are the two the, the two animals that are dominant and the animals that we are led by under the bachwana babarolo kingdom and then rona bataro rabataro bolo tlhara ba anang tsweni ba gara um, 20 being, <laughs> wait for it, Mikey, <laughs> <laughs> yes, but not the foolish one, uh, the wise one, <laughs> yes. Um, and one, one would ask, what is this um, animal belief? What is this animal system that, uh, that, that, why, especially at Brona Why, why, why do we have, why do we continuously emphasize on? you know, the belief of animals in our kingdoms and our subsects and our kind and you know, it's because as Africans, you we do realize pre-colonial Africa had no zoos. We had no zoos. Animals and human beings were living on the same land with no fence barriers. However, because we are very spiritual based people, we understood the depth of spiritually becoming one with the place. For instance, if you look at where Bataru are situated, there are actually a lot of monkeys and baboons. And for us to be able to survive and to live, we had the right of passage and we had procedures in which when we dwell there, especially as a family and as a growing kingdom, that we take upon the consciousness of the animals that are surrounding us so that we are living in harmony. Because also Barolong also, um, our believers of um, the lion and the, the elephant so that wherever we are there is that spiritual before physical harmony between the animals and the people without any fence bearers the power of African spirituality that Lord have mercy shall not die I don't know how the cross I do it I don't know how the Zulus do it but that's my understanding of Bachwan so yes, that is already touching on our spirituality as people. I'd also like to go, as I speak about spirituality, the belief of traditional healers. A lot of Christianized Africans believe that when you're believing in your ancestors, you are believing in demons. As the Real Talk with Katie, I'd like to step on this platform and I'd like to say that. May that belief end. Because as people... The only, our only existence, the reason why you are breathing, the reason why you're stepping onto this earth, the reason why you are who you are, is because of the very ancestors. In African spirituality, we do not worship our ancestors, but we have a covenant with them. They are in the spiritual world, and they I have not forgotten their children that are walking on the physical world. The physical world itself, in an African sense, is the physical world. And when you lose 
who you are and the people that walked before you have lost yourself. Jesus himself believed in his ancestors. But now we are here to talk about being African and we are touching on the indigenous African spirituality that continues to exist nonetheless, if you believe in it or not. Traditional healers, or shall I say traditional doctors, and during the months and the years of apartheid were called witch doctors. And this was a psychological intent to demonize our African spirituality as Africans. For many years have we demonized our African spirituality. And now I come forth and I say that with that, how do we fix it? How do we understand traditional healing and Western healing. You know, Western healing itself, when I say Western healing, I speak about European countries, that the Europeans had their own way of doing things. For instance, one would be a scholar and go to a university and study for seven years to come back and become, a, to come back and be a doctor. And this would be institutionalized at universities whereby if they learn of healing and doing ways in a logical sense and in a way that is book wise and understanding through text and understanding through wording and understanding through everything else, um, that when they come back from the seven years of studying as well as practice of surgery and so forth, when they come back from the seven years, they are now qualified and official doctors. And now, when we look at it from the African sense, we do have our own doctors, doctors of our systems, you know, because today, Africa, everything is Europeanized. Everything is Europeanized. Everything is, 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 of the, is, is Europeanized. Our law, the way we govern, um, our medicine, everything is Westernized. Everything is Europeanized. And this has moved us away from how we used to do things. Not that I'm saying we should go back to how it was back then. Not even England itself is the same as it was many years back. But how do we continue as South Africans going forward, sticking and still staying true to our African identity as a whole? And along this journey of life then, I've come to learn that an African traditional doctor is equivalent to a Western doctor. No one is higher than the other. It's just that they are from they are practicing it indigenously to how they know it. For instance, I've seen this a lot, whereby it is believed that white weddings, these white gowns and so forth, are traditional weddings for Europeans. And that a lot of us have been marrying into the tradition. We've been doing a lot of South Africans, a lot of South Africans, I don't know about other countries. What we do is on the Saturday, it would be a white wedding, and then on Sunday, it would be the traditional wedding. However, we do not realize that we are practicing two traditional weddings, just that the other is from Europe. So going back to that and touching on that, um, now looking at it in a sense of doctors and so forth, when you are to be a doctor, an indigenous traditional doctor, before you move forward and before you can even say, hey, I'm a doctor, you have to be called by your ancestors. So another thing about us Africans is that we are very spiritually based more than anything. It has to be shown spiritually in order for us to continue with it in the physical. So to be an indigenous doctor, you have to be called by your ancestors, to say that we have brought you on this earth. You do not dismiss the belief of God. God, you are called then to go through a, a, a phase and a training of, during the beginning of the new moon, going into the full moon, and many more other deeper things where you need to be excluded from your family and go for what we call a spiritual initiation school. 
not initiation in terms of when a man, when a boy becomes a man or when a girl becomes a, a woman, but now one that focuses on you as a traditional doctor and many others as well who will be in that training with you. However, the focus and the journey will only be for you as a person. You'd go through this. Go. Um, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's a YouTube channel right here on um, YouTube, um, Savvy, where they talk about such things. And that when you are going through this, what we call Uktuasa, uh, which is a transformational initiation, initiation, you then move from being just a villager to being reborn. Not only a villager, but a person of the community to being born into now, reborn into now becoming a full-on traditional people. As you guys know, the African quote, it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, here behind me, we've got um, doll figures that were used back in pre-colonial Africa uh, that come from countries you will see as the video continues from Ghana and also our very home ground, South Africa. It shows the importance of being a child and the importance of the inner child and African spirituality. Um, but you could see that this doll represents a spiritual message to the spiritual children as well. In African spirituality, we believe that the communication between the spiritual and who we are as people and the physical is through the display of beads, uh, wearing bracelets, and so forth. These beads, into my, through my perspective, look very sim perception, sorry, look very similar to the beads that we would find our African healers um, and our African shamans and spiritualists wear. So these dolls and these tools that were used by kids back then give them a reminder and spark their spiritual knowledge and spiritual existence on this earth. And it also kind of connects them to their own inner child that's deeper into the subconscious. Um, obviously, as they grow up, they will be more familiar of these beads when they begin to see their African doctors, when they even begin to take upon the journey for themselves. Um, here we've got a very similar one of the Ndebele tribe. It looks very nice. It looks very interesting. Um, the Ndebele people are also one of the, considered to be one of the most colorful people in Southern Africa. You'd find them around areas such as Limpopo. Um, apparently there is also more in Mozambique and also in Zimbabwe. Uh, they are also known to be part of the biggest kingdom of Makungubwe. As you can also see, there's a lot of use of beads, beads that are also displaying cultural existence and cultural image, but also a bead such as I spoke about earlier, the connection between the spiritual and the physical. Um, many spiritual healers, I, I hope they could please reply, comment, and uh, subscribe below as well, um, would relate to say that this is of something similar to what they wear when um, they, for instance, have dreams and so forth. A lot of things that we've seen very common in this museum, we'll show you the videos of the people talking, is that most of them began to have a dream. They first began to dream about certain things before they could create anything. <laughs> Someone, the person that manufactured this could have had a dream, could have seen shells and uh, beads of this color, of this nature in a certain pattern, and then began to make it a physical thing, uh, which then aids the person in the waking life and balances them and their chakras and all of their spiritual centers and their connection to their existence and their ancestors as a whole. So yes, thank you guys. Just enjoy this display um, now. that we use today uh, we used a uh, clay pots uh, not the ones that we use today also not the other we have three flip pots now um, that we use for outside cooking and so for these ones were the ones uh -oh. that we used not only as pots to cook okay. something it's gonna guide you okay. take a video.
Okay. All right. So it's not a pot. It's not a pot for cooking. It's not a pot. So the little arts must be straight base. They didn't take any kind of cooking. I'm saying what I'm saying. Oh, here it is. But babies are ipiso, ipiso, upiso. Put your arm against the cross. I'm nine. I'm nine. All right. I was not gonna know which base FM here by by preserving. Oh. If I didn't open. Okay. All right. Didn't open. You were not gonna see this ruler. What is? Let me see it. <laughs> Don't go and we're gonna, gonna take us out of this museum. If we, <laughs> let me put this back. Let's think security guards will be coming. Yeah. Oh, and the radio, nyani. It's done by a zoomer. We had our own smoking pipes. We had our own. We still have them. We have our own um, ways of dressing. We had our just and not limited only to the animal skins that they have only taught us about. You saw through the video. Gwanda Nyazaka was also explaining to us that I I was saying it was a pot. I I I, I was saying that because I was reading what I saw, like I said. So anyway, so you know our own traditional beer. I hope this was educative. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed uh, this very episode. Um, there's still more that we're yet to talk about. And I pray and hope that as the South African youth, we continue to get closer only to who we are and what we are, then further away, just as our great-great-grandfathers and our grandfathers during the midst of slavery, during the midst of colonization, during the midst of apartheid, when we had drifted away from
today's episode don't forget if you haven't watched episode one please do stay tuned if you haven't watched episode two with Rand's bliss please do stay tuned um if you haven't watched episode three it is also all here do watch do um spread the message please do like subscribe for more content that is yet to come thank you as well to kwanda nyazeka for being able to videograph uh, you know the parts that we have recorded there at the Brits Arts Museum and also for him coming through. Don't forget to also please check out his link, the link to his YouTube channel where he talks about entrepreneurship, where he talks about agripreneurship and also where he talks about all things finance and all things business. He's also met up with amazing people and many other business owners and he's also met up with many other people, uh, agri uh, agricultural uh, uh, far farmers back in the Eastern Cape that he has met up with. Just keep on keeping on and as well as staying tuned to mine that speaks about spiritual arts, social, political issues, uh, psychology, taboos and all things life. Yes, you are watching episode four of The Real Talk with Katie Stavello and also please stay tuned for episode five and thank you so much for watching. Be blessed. Thank you.